fasting I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice and to untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and he will say, here am I. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing of the finger and malicious talk. Good morning, Micah 7 7. Today's the day. Are you ready for the challenge? I am so excited about this challenge because I know that it is probably one of the greatest challenges I will personally go on because this is one area that's so hard to control and to um, use for good. So I just wanted to give you heads up one little tip and I think this is going to be the game changer for me and I just wanted to share it with you. So we're talking about going 40 days without using judgmental attitudes, criticism, sarcasm, negativity, complaining, gossip, all those things. How are we gonna do this? How are we going to be so intentional in our words? Well, I have got a small Bible class that I teach online and we're going through the book of Proverbs and the one thing that comes out that Solomon's instructing his son is to listen well. I think that's gonna be the game changer for all of us. Some of you are very good listeners and you don't, maybe you don't say a whole lot or maybe you're very thoughtful in what you do say. But I'm thinking that for the majority of us that th these next 40 days, I believe God can teach us to be good listeners. Now, we've been instructed in all these areas in our book. We've been instructed on what to do and how to handle situations, and we're gonna be digging into more of that. But I think that it's identifying, before the words come out, identifying is this pleasing to God. So I want you to imagine with me that you are uh, in a conversation with someone, maybe at the grocery store, okay? Maybe there is something going on and they're wanting to share this information with you, but you're not a part of the problem or the solution. So it becomes gossip. What are you gonna do? How are you gonna handle that? I think in the mornings before we start our day, we're going to pray these prayers. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. And then when we're in a situation that we really don't know what to do, sometimes it's a good thing to avert the attention somewhere else. Now, let me give you an example. I would, you many years ago, I was in a grocery store with one of my favorite people, Sarah Burns, Sarah Ackerson now, and she had her baby sister, Savannah, with her. And she was just a little girl, little, maybe two years old at the time. She was holding her and Savannah was wanting all these different things. And Sarah would say, instead of saying, no, you can't have it, you can't have it, Sarah would say, she said, here, let's put that back and get something better. So that's my hint, my tip for you in the next uh, 40 days is that when conversation starts happening and you begin to feel that pressure of being engaged in something negative or complaining or gossip of any sort, Think about something better. Pull something good out of a situation. Change your words, change your world. God is going to change your world with your words. So I have a few questions that he asked at the end here. He asked these questions. What is the Lord speaking? And these are questions for our daily journal. I encourage you to read this. If you do not have the book, I'm going to do the reading at the end of this devotional for those that do not have their book yet. But he asked three questions for us to look inward. Number one, what is the Lord speaking to me through these verses today? And this is Isaiah um, 58 verses six and nine. Number two, were there any particular words that came out of my mouth today that I need to repent of? I ask the Holy Spirit to touch my heart and keep these words out of my mouth tomorrow. Number three, where do I most need correction with my words? with judgments, criticism, sarcasm, negativity, complaining, gossip, or with family, friends, church members, coworkers, acquaintances, authorities, or any others. I promise you, we are going to be tempted. We are going to be tried. There will be a battle for our words in the next 40 days, but God is able to teach us. We're not gonna be perfect, 
but he's going to teach us his way. I'm wanting to learn that. I don't know about you, but I believe that all of us together really want to change our world. Listen, I love you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful first day on your fast. Give yourself grace. Give others grace. And let's have a wonderful Thanksgiving week. God bless. What an exciting challenge. It may be hard for you today to envision changing your habitual judgments of others or the way you size people up when you meet them. I know it was for me when I began working on this area in my life. So let's start with a preliminary inventory. During the day, do you find yourself being critical of your boss or using sarcastic humor? What is your first response when someone suggests something new? To think about what could go wrong? Do you find yourself complaining about items of little consequence that come along? When was the last time you sat and listened as someone passed on a juicy piece of gossip? When was the last time you were the one passing on that little piece of news about another person? For some, eliminating the pointing of the finger and malicious talk will prove to be a lifestyle change in an area that has developed over many years. Or perhaps for you, it might be something that has already tugged at your heart every time you remember the awful words you can't believe came out of your mouth. Some things only happen by fasting, and in this case, we're referring to fasting words. But such change is possible. And of course, we have an intercessor, a great high priest, Christ, standing in the gap for us when we fall short. The truth is, we can't change our patterns with our words by the arm of the flesh. Galatians 5.17 explains, For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. Our flesh doesn't have what it takes to make this kind of change with our words. Bridling this unruly member, the tongue, and bringing it under the control of the Spirit is the greatest of all challenges. However, the Lord has given us the Holy Spirit for just such a purpose. This is the fast Isaiah chose, a fast to break the bonds of wickedness and the bands of the yoke and to set the oppressed free. By God's grace, this is the fast we undertake now, a 40-day fast of words.